So my name is Adam Campbell, uh, owner and winemaker of Elk Cove Vineyards. Uh, we're just uh, about 20 miles north of here, uh, outside the town of Gaston. And uh, I really kind of grew up in the in the industry. My folks uh, started Elk Cove when I was, I think, three, so in the early 70s. Uh, and back then, there were only a couple hundred acres of grapes in Oregon, so uh, it's definitely you know a leap of faith on their parts. And and uh, it was. Uh, it's interesting growing up in the in in kind of a, a industry that's in its infancy and, and seeing it all the way through. Mm -hmm. I feel really fortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you um, talk a little bit about um, IPNC and how what are your memories of IPNC? Because we're focusing on sort of the you know this 25th an anniversary of it, and and it's pretty clear that by then, you know, the Oregon wine industry has been fairly well established, right? This isn't the, the, the beginnings of when your, your parents are just trying to get things started, but, but it's clearly something that they're, that they're wanting to achieve some goals with. So can you, do you have early memories of when IPNC was started? Yeah, um, I, w I would have been uh, kind of in my mid-teenage years uh, when IPNC first started. And in some ways it was, you know, really just a great validation of what, uh, what my folks and the other uh, pioneers of the industry um, I did. I, I think growing up um, as a youngster, uh, I'm sure that it's a shared experience with all of us uh, of that generation that, that we kind of saw you know, what our parents were doing. It, it was neat and we loved living in the country and, and uh, uh, living uh, that type of life, but it was honestly kind of a little bit weird and embarrassing uh, in, uh, in that um, I would went to uh, a farm school, uh, but no one else's parents were growing grapes and, and uh, certainly not making wine. And, and uh, the great thing about the IPNC and one of my memories of it is, is just kind of looking around and, and meeting people from all over the world that had a shared experience with me uh, in that, um, yeah, they, they might be a little bit weird, but they were also really passionate about uh, something that, that uh, I saw in my parents, you know, passionate about Pinot Noir, passionate about growing grapes and making wine. And uh, I think uh, those first few IPNCs, uh, I think as a, as a teenager, it was a great experience to be able to look around and, and uh, see people from all over uh, uh, with a shared experience and to realize that, that um, the uh, what they were saying and and, and what uh, they were tasting in the glass uh, put Oregon uh, in some great company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't, why don't you talk about the um, uh, this notion of the celebration? You know, um, one of the things they clearly decided they didn't want to do was to have it be a, a competition. That they really wanted to have a celebration. And what, what does that mean to you in terms of you know IPNC being a celebration? Well, I think it's a it's a um, it's a great way to um, truly be able to bring all Pinot Noir producers together. I think back then, you know, right now, um, as I go out and talk about wine and promote wine and sell wine, Pinot Noir is somewhat of a, a darling now um, out in the market. But certainly in the uh, in the 80s and early 90s, it was not. It was something that was uh, kind of left field and. Uh, and I think that um, you know, getting people together, uh, not to compete, but in a in a celebration. I think that some of the best things uh, about the early setup is calling it a celebration, and the other is to to uh, constantly remind ourselves as Oregonians that uh, uh, it's an international celebration, and that we are so fortunate to be able to get great producers from all over the world to come here. And uh, at the end of the day, um, celebrate Pinot Noir, and uh, you know we get the, the added benefit of bringing um, you know wine um, advocates, uh, wine writers, uh, great consumers, and they all leave here tasting some great Oregon wine, tasting some great. Uh, New Zealand Pinot Noir, tasting some great Burgundy, great California Pinot Noir, uh, but they all leave having had this amazing experience in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
we don't need to, to be competitive uh, with wines uh, from afar. We want uh, we constantly remind ourselves that that it's our uh, our job to, to celebrate them. Mm -hmm. Well, and it sounds like a, c a couple of people, um, Jason Lett came in and spoke with us too a bit, um, that there's also something about Pinot Noir in terms of the, um, you know, that where it's, ma it, there are variations in terms of where it's made, that as a grape, it's also fairly unique and it can't be sort of toyed with a lot, you know, perhaps. Can you talk about the idea of Pinot Noir as a grape itself and its properties that kind of make it an interesting uh, grape? Well, I think you know Pinot Noir definitely uh, attracts a certain type of person. Um, you know, my family was um, um, Oregonians. Uh, my grandfather was a pear grower. My parents wanted to do cool climate varietals here. They were committed to being in Oregon. But I'd say, for the most part, uh, folks that that have come here to do wine, and then folks that that are doing that in other locations, they're particularly attracted to Pinot Noir and maybe particularly attracted to it because it's such a difficult grape and finicky grape to grow, uh, you are going to be constantly challenged throughout your life uh, to, to do good work with it. Um, and uh, I think that, that, you know, getting folks together, it's amazing how, you know, even when we bring in producers from uh, very far away, South Africa, um, Australia, New Zealand, uh, all through Europe, and they come here, and we all, uh, I guess, kind of quickly uh, relate because we all uh, uh, have the same struggles to uh, and the same passions about uh, growing and making. You know what we're, you know, I guess it, it consumes us, Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. So can you um, uh, give us the names of your family real quick? Your grandfather who grew grapes, and then your parents, just for the kind of the record, I guess. Yeah, my, my grandfather uh, is a, was a um, first generation Swiss um, um, person who grew um, apples and pears up in the Hood River Valley. Uh -huh. And uh, his grandfather was the one who immigrated from Switzerland, and he was a dairy farmer. And you know, my grandfather said, "I'm never going to do dairy farm." That you know, it's, <laughs> and so he went and did apples and pears. And I think that was a good good decision. Uh -huh. And my parents, of course, you know, having grown up on a on a pear farm, were like, "Well, I don't want to do pears. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to do something different." And I feel really fortunate because they chose grapes, and uh, and they chose Pinot Noir. And uh, coming into it as a as a second generation. Uh, um, winemaker but fourth generation Oregon farmer um, you know I have a lot of history with our local area and knowing the good sites and good places to grow grapes and uh, you know just having grown up around the kitchen table listening to my parents be uh, absolutely consumed with how to make and grow and and uh, produce and sell uh, Oregon Pinot Noir is you know I, that's a a reel in my head that I constantly, you know, pull back and and pull things out from uh, from uh, their successes and failures, mm -hmm. and uh, and I can, you know, get all those things together and and then take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Because there, you know, there are a lot of you know second generation um, you know, growers or people who are involved somehow in the wine industry. Um, how do you view? Um, what, what is your experience as a second generation as opposed to your parents who were you know, part of some of the, the early the, 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 that early wave? So what, what do you, how do you see as things have changed for you as, as a grower? Well, I think that you know when my parents started, um, you know there was a real emphasis on on uh, you know doing everything yourself and and uh, and uh, starting you know from scratch and saving money all along the way. Because there was always this kind of wonder about, well, you know, will people appreciate this? Will people pay, uh, you know, the amount of money that it's going to take to justify the type of farming and, and things like that that we want to do? And uh, and I think just you know, um, by the fact that, that uh, my parents didn't bring a lot of capital into it, they brought a lot of human capital, but not a lot of dollars. Um, they had to do a lot of hard work and. And I have the benefit of of um, being here in a in a somewhat mature industry where um, you know I can access financing and things like that to to grow and to plant more vineyards. We've had tons of people come from from all over, 
you know, the world uh, and, and bring in capital to start their projects here in Oregon. And, uh, you know, I welcome them. I think that some people think that uh, us second generations would be uh, so insular that we don't want people from outside. But the great thing about the outsiders that have come in uh, and, you know, um, is that they all buy into the same Oregon ethos that, um, and, and Oregon wine growing ethos that, that I think my parents and the, and the pioneering generation had. And so uh, they all want to do the same quality work. It was kind of like what I was talking about earlier with Pinot Noir being kind of this great thing that, that keeps us together and keeps us on the same page. And uh, folks that have uh, entered the industry uh, over the last 40 years, uh, it seems to me they all have a pretty similar mm -hmm. world view. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, um, can you talk about the the role of IPNC in terms of kind of its of Oregon wine history? Where where does it sort of stand in your view, in terms of uh, you know as an event? Well, I think there were a lot of things happening. You know, when when it was uh, started in that kind of you know mid to late '80s, and a lot of you know recognition uh, the fact that the uh, the Druins were here, and, and or at least planning to be here, and plant vineyards. Um, a lot of excitement about, um, you know, some great vintages we had. I think some of the vintages through the early 80s, um, you know, we had um, my father as the winemaker had raging successes, and then you know, really tough failures, uh, really based on on the weather and things like that. Um, yeah, I remember. 83 was a, just a classic vintage that mm -hmm. uh, so much recognition from from people throughout the country, and uh, uh, and then 84 was you know rained out vintage and and very difficult. Uh, but I think that you know starting an event like um, the um, IPNC um, really helped bring folks from from far away to share ideas uh, um, to um, not just. Um, talk to consumers about about what we do, but to truly uh, um, network and, and and push each other to do better and better work. And it's and it sounds like it's actually sort of spawned other events. We were just talking about the Oregon Wine Camp, right? That it sounds like it's 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 produced other things in its in its wake in many in many ways. Yeah, I mean IPNC, I think is is really the the benchmark for. Um, single varietal uh, celebrations or promotion that they've many many areas have tried to emulate, and I think that one of the reasons, and I've, I've you know participated in Pinot Noir events in in uh, California and uh, in Australia um, that were truly modeled after the IPNC, um, and um, you know those are great events. I think one of the things that it always seems to kind of confound the people that are starting these events is the international aspect. And uh, when I've participated in them, they, they definitely have a very strong uh, focus on uh, the local Pinot Noir community. And uh, uh, maybe to the detriment of their event, I think that it always, when I come back from those type of events that are um, you know, modeled after the IPNC, it always makes me come back and go, Gosh, you know, folks that started this and folks that have continued are just so smart to keep it, uh, you know, basically e equally split between Oregon Pinot producers and Pinot producers from around the world. Uh, not just because it makes for a, a better, more fun event for me, which it does, you know, I love tasting through everybody's wines and see how they do, but it just truly gives us such a validity that uh, I think uh, other events uh, have found a tough time to, em to emulate. So you've participated in IPNC as a vineyard, yep. right? Uh, what's what's that like? Um, what, what are some of the things that you do when you when you're you know one of the the featured vineyards, and, and how do how do you go about doing that? Well, you know we try to um, you know we try to um, uh, participate as fully as possible and uh, um, meet as many people, um, not just you know other producers but consumers. I mean that's. You know, one of the great things is that uh, it's a very high percentage of uh, winemakers to consumers here at this event. So, with uh, with thirty uh, um, with sixty producing wineries, you know, there'd be a hundred or over a hundred of the folks running around campus and going to the vineyards uh, tours are uh, winemakers or winery owners, and so it's just a great thing for for the consumers that come and. and uh, it's really attracted uh, just 
you know, again, people that are so passionate about Pinot Noir that, you know, you never run out of things to talk about. And um, I love pouring wine at the, at the, uh, at the uh, alfresco tastings where people truly do get a, a great sense of uh, um, the vintage. So 30 wines all from one vintage from all different countries and, uh, you know, methodically going through and tasting all 30 wines uh, is just an amazing experience that I never, I never get tired of even after many, many years. Uh, and then, you know, the, the whole experience of getting people out into the vineyard, um, you know, we've had them do tasks in the vineyard, uh, help with thinning, uh, yeah, do blending seminars in the wineries. Um, and. Uh, it's a it's a great time to show off Oregon as well. I mean, uh, the weather, while maybe it can be a little bit hot, usually cools down at night. Uh, people in, inevitably leave here saying uh, Oregon has the best weather ever, and we always have to remind them that that it really isn't truly that way. That our summer weather is amazing, but uh, but then we suffer the rest of the year. <laughs> so you've hosted um, out at, out at the wine uh, out at the, in the vineyards. So what, what are, you know, you mentioned a few things that you have people do. So what's that process like? Or do they, buses come out? Is it, and, and what's, what are the things that you've done out in the vineyard? Well, one of the great things, um, another great thing about IPNC is, is uh, you know, we have an amazing uh, staff of, um, you know, um, people that are paid and employed by the IPNC and then volunteers. And as a winery uh, participating and hosting as a, uh, a vineyard workshop, uh, I know that a lot of things are already been worked out in advance. Uh, there's an amazing chef on site that's going to cook a great meal for uh, the 60 people that show up on our bus, and uh, I get to just host them and you know take them out into the vineyard, show them what we do. Um, usually, uh, there's some element of uh, getting other wineries from around the country into our vineyard. Uh, uh, we've had, well, when I've done vineyard seminars, we've had uh, wineries from, from, certainly from Burgundy, but New Zealand, California, um, South Africa. And uh, as, a, as the host winery, uh, I get to try to incorporate them into uh, the uh, dialogue with uh, the uh, attendees and uh, get them to tell Tell what it's like to, to grow grapes in Burgundy, and how is it different than what you see here, and and uh, what are your challenges in South Africa or New Zealand, and how are they different to what they say here? And uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, people uh, have had a great experience at my winery. I don't need to talk a lot about my winery; they're already there. Mm -hmm. So I'm much more interested in getting the five or six other wineries that are attending to uh, to, at, to attending the lunch to to talk about what they do. Mm -hmm. So it's a rich experience for the for the folks. Well, it sounds like a really good opportunity, also, just to exchange ideas and to and to learn from one another. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, there's a lot that goes on uh, in at IPNC in terms of uh, uh, talking about you know the challenges that that we're facing and similarities uh, between uh, different growing regions. Um, and that's a great opportunity, but it's also just incre increasing the I guess the family of Pinot Noir and, and your broader network, and uh, if you, um, it, in, I guess it encourages us to go travel to these other countries and meet the people that we've met at IPNC, and uh, uh, inevitably they all have such a great time when they're here. Uh, they just have such a feel-good um, attitude about Oregon that uh, that really, as a as a winemaker, I'm proud of, and uh, as a member of the Oregon wine community, and, and I also benefit from. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like there's all, it, um, one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit with people too is the the fact that you know it's um, the McMinnville community really is embraced uh, embraced it. There are a lot of people who volunteer either from McMinnville or from Portland and Seattle and. Um, so there are a lot of great volunteer experiences here. Um, also, you've got it being held at Linfield College, which is the Baptist College, um, uh, which I think especially in the er early days there was a little bit of controversy about. But it sounds like there's an interesting sort of community. It's a further representation, not just of the, the early days of the Oregon you know, uh, winery um, vineyard owners as well, but also you've got this great kind of blend of 
you know, the community, the Linfield community and the McMinnville community as well. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in addition to be a participate, being a participating winery um, many times over the last 25 years, I was also on the board of directors for six mm -hmm. years. And that was always a big focus for us was uh, just really being sure that um, we knew we got so much from our relationship with Linfield College and with the volunteers and, uh, and the chef community. Uh, and uh, we just constantly wanted to remind ourselves hey, we need to make sure that, that we show our appreciation to each of those uh, um, stakeholders in this. And uh, um, I hope we've done a good job. We need to constantly remind ourselves, too, that, that uh, we really benefit. Um, there's no other place that uh, we could hold this type of event for this many people. Um, it would, uh, if we didn't have the space here at, at Linfield College uh, and the relationship that we've, we've built together, um, it would, you know, we'd have to totally reinvent the event and it'd be something very different. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I would hope that, that uh, and I think that uh, Linfield gets a lot of benefit. I know a lot of the folks that come out to IPNC for the first time, they're having, you know, maybe kids that are deciding where to go to school or, or uh, and hopefully we can help increase the, the uh, um, level of consciousness of folks around the nation uh, that Linfield's, uh, you know, a great partner for the IPNC and also a amazing place to go to school. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, how, do you, how do you see the, um, you know, this exchange of ideas? What, what are the things that it per perhaps have affected you personally in terms of, uh, you know, there are the exchange of ideas, there are relationships that seem to get established or, you know, long term. We've talked with some of the volunteers in the kitchen, for example, who get to know chefs, but we've also had probably two or three marriages related to IPNC, um, and ideas being exchanged. What have you gotten personally and professionally out of this? Well, you know, I, I grew up in the, in the industry, and I think sometimes people would think that, that that would mean that I'd know everybody. But there's so many, it's such a dynamic industry with new people coming in all the time and uh, different areas where people are growing grapes and, and doing work. Um, I, I really felt like when I started uh, participating in IPNC as a winemaker, it just you know very quickly increased um, my um, you know network of folks that that I could uh, call for information, to talk to, to hang out with socially, to go visit. Um, I think that that in terms of uh, other wineries and other winemakers, uh, it, it really did a lot for me uh, to be able to to connect with those people at a great time of year, uh, shared experience uh, uh, in a non-competitive environment where we get to taste each other's wines, and, uh, and then also with the, the folks um, in the community of, of chefs. I mean, I think that's one of the things that sometimes uh, uh, consumers that, that come here for the first time don't realize is that IPNC is truly a, a wine and food event. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, we're happy to, uh, as wineries, uh, show our wines and then take a step back and, and get to show off the amazing chefs from around the Northwest that come here and just do such amazing work. And uh, I guess that's, you know, from when I've uh, talked to consumers from around the country, they come here and they're like, I can't believe what a great food event this is. This is the best food I've had all year. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's true at lunches. Uh, certainly dinners, the salmon bake is, is uh, an amazing experience, but uh, um, I think that overall the, the quality of the food and, and uh, the connections it brings to wineries in terms of, um, you know, talking with chefs and, and, and meeting folks like that is really valuable. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Pinot Noir seems to be one of those wines that really is paired well with food. I mean, it's just one of the... the the, in, I think someone we interviewed said it almost demands, you know, being paired with food. So it seems like there's a real natural connection there in terms of having it be both a wine and food event. Yeah, I think I think Pinot Noir is the the kind of quintessential um, food wine uh, because uh, it's a wine that that changes based on whatever you're eating. And and uh, one of the things that that we've really benefited from, I think, and it, it's really tied us together with the food community here, is that. For whatever reason, uh, Pinot Noir goes amazingly with um, foods from the Northwest. 
So, um, you know, kind of the classic pairing for me is, you know, grilled salmon, which, you know, we have the salmon bake and, and uh, our, uh, not just Pinot Noir, but Pinot Gris as well. Those two varietals just show so well uh, with salmon. And we love to, you know, through um, the lunches and smaller gatherings, uh, really get the um, folks that are attending the IPNC to talk with the chefs and, and to hear about, you know, fresh Oregon salmon, uh, the berries we have here, hazelnuts, uh, things that are uh, kind of uh, sometimes we take for granted as being uh, uh, just what we eat. And really, they're, they're not just what we eat. They're truly uh, classic Oregonian Pinot-friendly foods. Um, do you have any um, specific memories um, of IPNC you'd like to share? We've had some really in everything from stories with some of the workers, you know, talking about one of them, I think, in the wine room was talking about driving across campus and forgetting he had a coworker in the back of the truck and the wine slid and the guy threw his, himself in front of it and also set kind of near disasters with food and um, uh, a couple of the winery owners have talked about some of the fun things they've done with people who have kind of come out but to, to their, to their uh, vineyard. But do you have any kind of you know, interesting or, or enjoyable or funny stories you'd like to share about or memories that you might have of, of IPNC? Uh, one of my, one of my uh, favorite memories is, uh, um, relates to uh, just what a great uh, community of volunteers that we have. Uh, that participate in in the uh, in the dinners and all through campus, but specifically at the dinners, I, I remember uh, my wife and I had just had our second child, and and uh, we have a very close uh, bond with our uh, her OB doc that that delivered both our kids, and uh, and uh, we came here and and uh, poking around the the kitchen at the grand dinner, and uh, there's our OB doc, a, a fellow named Dr. Ono. And he's got a big knife coming out like this, and and gave Carrie a big hug, gave my wife a big hug, and and uh, he, he's just one of the volunteers, and he just loves food and he loves wine, and here's uh, someone that that uh, uh, you know he's a doctor, he's uh, probably uh, in his 60s, and he takes you know three days off to come here and just you know taste Pinot Noir uh, and to to learn about um, about being a chef with some of the best chefs in the Northwest. And, uh, you know, I see him there every year. He's, uh, he's cutting vegetables, but he's looking at the chef and he's, he's learning. And, and uh, I just thought, man, what a great, you know, what a high caliber of people that, that we get to come volunteer their time and, and uh, truly invaluable for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to, to share? I can't think of anything. <laughs> anything I? Nope, I think okay. we're good. All right.